Try to wave her in. Then we're across here for the South Central Telephone. Uh, some object that we're on a fiber object down here. On the, mm -hmm. Right there on the county line. Right away to Harrison's. Mm -hmm. Right away to the way. So, mm -hmm. we're going to do some more of our south. It's a little old phone company. I'm not a small object. It barely comes up in there. Can't they? So, yeah. got that right there. And then we got a little bit over the south. The other day when we did the one down here on the southwest road on the mm -hmm. curve, did we approve for one crossing or was that two? Well, they just crossed our road once. Uh -huh. They just crossed right there by the curve. Yeah, I mean, the south one was the one under there, too. That's, a, that's, a up, that's not our road. It's the same road. Mm -hmm. I thought they would just watch the curve. Nope. So, they crossed. You're coming, if you're coming south down there and it curves like that, uh -huh. they crossed here and they crossed here. Oh. They did? Yep. Yeah. I, I saw that one. But... I seen this one they were working on and I come back by a couple days later and they had that for the whole deck there too. Yeah, I saw the one because because I saw where you know where they kind of had because they wanted to fix it. So right, yeah, out down to the ditch, they come mm -hmm. all the way out to where they board. I, well, and I didn't know if it was a different company or if it was this. I, I thought, man, I didn't know if that drawing was the only one crossing. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll go take a look I didn't know if they ran into problems and had to move over or what they had to do, but I knew it wasn't what we'd approved. No, because we approved the one that goes straight right. south. Yeah. The one you're talking about. I'll go look at it. Okay. I don't know if I still have the guys coming over so I can call. Yeah, he was actually writing some uh, Pratt County addresses down there. It's county line, so he was calling it Northeast 120th Street. And it's <laughs> for Pratt County, it is. What for our, for us? It's southwest 90. No, it's southeast 90. I think I'm going to sound That's what I thought it said. Yeah. I couldn't figure out why you were by Reggie Harrison. No, that, I, wrote the, I wrote the Southwest. But so southwest. When, they, yes. when they bore this fiber optic, do they encase that in that casing too when they run across under when they bore the grid? I don't think it's cased. So they just bore it. They the bore it with the cable. Cable, yeah. cable under it. Yeah. How deep under the road is it? I mean, is it three it's feet? It's supposed to be four foot under four foot? Four foot flow line of the ditch. Oh. So most point of the ditch, it should be four, four feet below that. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't ever be an issue for anything. Right? And it used to say, I think, it used to be 36. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to see something? Mm -hmm. I don't see where you're coming out at the address. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's... Scribbled at the top there. Oh, the south, it. yeah, there it is. I don't think I wrote southwest. It's supposed to be southwest. Uh, southeast, I mean. Yeah, and then... Northeast 10th yeah. Street. Yeah. And so that is actually Pratt right County Northeast. So it's a mile and a half off of 281. It's right there at Reggie's house. It would be 2,000, almost back to a mile line, to our mile line. Do you have yeah. any issues with this? No. I think originally a lot of this uh, South Central Telephone Association to bore the road at Southeast 90th. And where's the other there's not an intersection. On Southeast 90th, there's not an intersection. It'd just be to the west of South East 10th Street. To the east end, I'm sorry. To the east of Southeast. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of screwy there. We're going to put those mile, you know, they're mile lines a half mile apart. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh yeah, they're 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 headed to that corner today. We have we have gotten the photos anyway. We're just now we're just now getting it. <laughs> That's what I always say. 
No, we're just um, Thanks for getting us hold the big steel sanctuaries we're talking about in one Oh yeah, I and I just didn't you know, Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He was right. right. People say he did a good job too. I talked to Donnie just a little bit. If you want me to talk to Bruce, I would. I would. I mean, I I can't help but think that they should do something there. Like I said, I the only reason I I don't think it's right to everybody to I don't want to phrase this the wrong way. I mean, I it just, it just doesn't seem right to worry about helping because it's helping them more than it's helping right. us. Yeah. I guess it'd be a good. And it isn't normal truck traffic. No. That road ain't That's built to take that turn and crossing like that. But so what percentage of where would we like for him to be? What are we to get him? <laughs> what? All of it? Well, it's hard on truck. I'll tell you what. It's hard, it's hard, on, hard on trucks, trucks too. I mean, I know some people, if they were driving in there, really, they complained about the one but when that thing, <laughs> when, they, when that thing was built, well, you know, there wasn't no. semis. No. There was not, they didn't build it right in the right spot. Well, the skill should be. And, and that's, that's, see, that's one thing I ask. You said, if you guys plan to build a building or anything anytime soon, I mean, the building where you would move the scale. Yeah. They don't have a lot of room. Really. No, they don't. I'll bet you they don't plan on doing that. Because, you know, they put their scales in. So just they ought to have the so they could use it better. I'll talk to Bruce. Well, it'd be I something to discuss. Yeah. 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 Because, I mean, their truck's all in and out of just as much as anybody else's because they're always moving around. Yeah. And then I did, I was talking talk to you earlier yeah. on, on Monday. We called on Monday. Yeah, and they are doing some looking down here at 2 or 4 or Yeah, we got a letter. So, okay. Mm -hmm. They're doing some different looking at some different things. He told me dinner change and they priced it at probably about ten million dollars. The roundabout was three or four. Really? Yeah. So it's really? pretty expensive. Well, they're figuring everything for these. I don't want to. Well, these big. These, well, it's a, it's it's all for these big heavy long <laughs> loads right. because yeah. of where all these wind wind generators and stuff are going with these long loads and they. It's going to be just and if people are crashing into each other, I mean, they're going to have to be they're going to big monster truck it like they did down in Florence. That's happened out of my That's a, Yeah, that down there's a mess. But they did. Yeah, but it did. Have, I mean, it did. It, no, but they yeah. went right through it. Yeah, but I bet you they're not going that. Not that many miles. Yeah, but yeah. no. no. at first they were. Yeah. That's why most of them are kind of built up. Or they yeah. Have some, you know, to stop that. But at least it slows the traffic down. Stops the bad wrecks. I mean, if, if something's going to happen, you know, with the rest of that is going to be not here. Yeah. Or yeah. major if you don't go around. That's the way to go. Bring up your deal about the damages that you got both of them here. I have it listed over there. Weren't you the one that asked about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, you, do we have a resolution in place for or damages on our like roads? heavy truck traffic and oil field stuff stuff that tears up the roads? Like they probably had down in the, the 
township? Do we have something in place like that on our on our roads? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, other than what we in the statutes. There's nothing in the statutes I guarantee you. It's something the county would have to do using its own police powers. So, so nothing that I'm aware of I've ever been been known of the time that I've been. I think we need to do something. I need to have something to fall back on if we have a lot well, of... Yeah, I mean, you may never, you may never use it, but at least if it right. you need it, it's there. I mean, yeah. You know, that makes Talk to those guys down in Barber and Kingman. I mean, they wish well, they, they had should, something. I don't say they, every meeting we go to, they talk about their roads just to be trash. They, now they have a, a kind of a heavy use permit fee. Mm -hmm. I know we do down in yeah, Harbor County, they yeah. have some real issues. Kind of interesting to see what some of this point of is. <laughs> we could do something like that, couldn't we, Joe? Sure. You could easily enact you know, a system where there, there's weight restrictions and, you know, Above a certain weight, you need a permit. Typical problem, though, lies in the enforcement. Yeah. No, I the obvious. It, it, yeah, it is. I agree. But at the time, we know we have damaged roads. I mean, it'd be pretty yeah. easy to enforce at that point because it gets really expensive. All those sort of mm -hmm. super heavy. Vehicles crunches your black tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the state permits most of that year when, when they just disregard the permit. I mean, they're supposed to be permitted. They're supposed to be told when they can go and when they can't. But the state doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, on their roads, I mean, but when they get on ours, yeah, yeah, they're not directed to go there. But I know it doesn't mean that, that you have to have. You have to mark your route. We, we, in Ellsworth County, we got this stupid blacktop which parallels I-70 for about five or six miles. And when the highway patrol has a scale crew on I-70, you know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, especially with the, with the quarry up there. Uh, uh, so, I mean, the short answer is yes, we can put something in place, but forcing it, you know, it's, it's basically going to probably fall upon the sheriff's office. But if we see damages, we have something to fall back on. Well, big, biggest problem is unless you, you know, lay eyes on the, the offending vehicle, it's really difficult to prove what we have. Yeah, except like in Union Township where they saw the American you need to do trucks in and out. Get, get license plates and all that good stuff. And yeah, well, yeah, they typically don't care when they're dropping those are down. Well, they don't Yeah, but that's not the point of it. They fail to understand it. But we've learned that guys were saying that they dropped them on the blacktop. Down the ditch, maybe down the road. Oh, the dozers.
<laughs> you want to have that front window on hell. <laughs> Things. Go ahead. Monday I had the opportunity to meet with our Stafford and Maxwell crew captains just to kind of see how things were going. Um, seems to be okay, everything's going on board. I'll be meeting actually with Stafford's crew captain on Friday to go with their ambulance to make sure their supplies are there. Maxwell's going on Monday. Um, we talked about getting CPR into the high school for the high school seniors. I think as many people as we've been in the community, CPR certified is what we're pretty much going after. So I've got Greg as the Maxville. Um, he's getting home to Maxville School because he works there. <laughs> and he's also the crew captain. Georgia is actually getting home to Stafford School. And they're going to get it in there. And she's a crew captain there. And I went and talked to the school yesterday, CPR school. And I offered it to them. They're going to look at a date and a time. And we're going to see if we can get these other seniors certified. Um, and then. You guys might have seen <laughs> these wandering under counties. <laughs> I, I hit every gas station, I hit every <laughs> business, I hit everything. Um, trying to see, we're going to have a point of interest meeting on Thursday the 24th to see what kind of interest we have out there for EMTs to start an EMT class in January. So I'll know more on Thursday about how many numbers we're looking at. Um, and then just to invite you guys out again on Monday the 21st, we're going to be doing altered mental status as our community. Um, that's pretty much all I had. I didn't know. Um, I'll be meeting with Dr. Farmer on Monday. I'm going to be going over a few things that some of our crew captains are wanting. And um, I don't know if you guys need me to take anything to him. Any concerns? I don't have any. I mean, I think one of the things here last week we discussed. I don't know. Anything else you guys would like to see us? do or what we're not doing, anything you guys can think of? Okay. Recruit more. No, I'm, I'm all over that. I'm all over that. That's my first, my okay. first priority, trying to get that out. Yeah. Are you having any trouble keeping it filled now? Um, we did have some, somebody called in sick today, and then we had another person going to be gone for um, something to do with lawyer, a deposition or something that's got to be at. So I'm going to actually go over this afternoon team up with Stafford to bring us a full service ambulance and hope that nothing happens and if it does, um, I'll be calling. I've got a couple volunteers that can call and see if they can come in this afternoon. So we're working on it. We're a little short staff, but we're trying to try to maneuver it as best we can. So. That's really all I, oh, and I did uh, meet with the hospital. I met with Julie and Todd a couple of days ago. They said that the finances are, are going good, but they're going to be here not this Wednesday, not next Wednesday, but the weekend after that. Yeah. So I didn't know, I, I'll be coming here weekly. I could bring you guys how many runs we have and what I've built out, and do you want to wait? I, I'm not, out? I don't really want to see all that. I mean, that's just, in my opinion, for, for us, in my opinion, that's just wasted time on your part. Okay. I mean, unless it's the true accounts receivables and collections, mm -hmm. that's all I care to see. And mainly, the, the old stuff of how we're kind of becoming for getting that right. collected. And I think, too, you'll be repetition because yeah. you'll get it, I'll be giving it to you, and then they're going to give it to you again and say, this yeah. is how many runs they've had yeah. for the month. And, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, that's I right. just, I think as long as we get the true accounting of the only accounts receivables, know where we're at on collecting the old stuff, and just keep it, keep it current. You know, that's... There won't be anybody here on the 30th. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it'll be the 6th. Okay, the 6th. I have heard from the I just talked to him about that yesterday. I guess I just yeah, it won't be to the six. So do you know if they sent a letter with some of those old ones? They said they sent pretty much a generic, a generic letter with everybody. Um, Julie said she's gotten some phone calls back, but they're more of, well, I had insurance at the time. We had to do a self-pay. Uh, they didn't produce their insurance, and they realized that, um, and they're dealing with that. We did have a, a lady, we'll have to approach you about it, but a charity here. Um, Stanford Hospital has charity care. We've never done that. But we had a lady that has a 24-year-old husband who passed away within the last year and had racked up over $1,000 worth of bills, and she can't pay it. Well, Stafford does something called charity care, and I don't know anything about it. But I thought it would give you guys a heads up that they'll probably be discussing that with you on that certain account. Okay. So. Very good. Um, okay. Thank you.
this week? This week? Um, I'd say about six. It hasn't been terrible, but you know, it, it's, been, it's been steady. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Basically, I came to ask uh, Nita if, if we finally got a legal description of that de annexation. Mm -hmm. Well, our next stop then is to put the notice in the newspaper. Yeah, I thought maybe we'd get together when yeah. you're here. I don't think Let's do it before I have another <laughs> kidney stone. <episode. laughs> you know, I, I get all doped up on the morphine. Yeah, I've heard from both Hanvel and um, the biodiesel people. I can't think of it. But yeah, we've got legal descriptions, so we should be ready to roll. Okay. What do you have to do with that? Yeah, yeah. we got to put notice in the official yeah. newspaper that we're going to have a, when a you're hearing public, public hearing. hearing. It's, it's one of those little statutes that, you know, basically operates to the benefit of the local newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We like them. We'll get that taken care of. I mean, you know, with today's, you know, technology, I mean, most counties have a website where you've got your agenda published. And I dare say a goodly number of people, you know, who have business with the county look at the website. I really don't think a whole lot of people read legals in newspapers. Okay, um, I've got a couple things. When Jeff brought in Tom Fisher and Cassie Blake's salary increases a week or two ago, he had the wrong steps and ranges. <laughs> and of course, I didn't pay attention. So Tom would actually, he his original request was to move Tom from range 8, step 6, to range 8, step 7. Well, Tom's already on 8, 7. So he should have moved him from 8, 7 to 8, 8. And Cassie was the same way. She He requested range 4, step 4, to range 4, step 5. She's already on step 5. So she would move from 4 to 6. Just so you know. Um, I put the, uh, the ad for the um, MS director in the paper, Pratt, Great Bend, Hutch, and that includes some websites that they have access to. We spend about $1,200 for one week of advertising. So, and one applicant. So, do you want me to extend it another week? I think two weeks. Right, another week? It'll be in St. John paper today. It'll be in St. John and Stafford for two weeks. So it'll be this week and next week for that. But the others stops on. What about the website that Steve was going to post that on? I don't know if he did. Um, I don't even know. Was it the website. emergency services website? Uh -huh. <clears throat> we can check on that. If they didn't, Davin could probably get something together. Do you have okay. something typed up uh -huh. I can take back yeah. to him? He could post it on there. Or I can email it to him. Okay. Um,
I don't know a lot of details yet. They said that they within the next couple of weeks they'd like to have someone come out and meet with Anita and um, Lisa and kind of work through some of the issues of the technical side and how the money will flow and so forth. My understanding is that they allow progress building on this program. You know, some programs will expect you to complete the entire project and then the reimbursement comes at the end. This one, my understanding is that they allow progress building, so we'll work through the strategy of how to, to do that in a way that doesn't um, put strain on the county because it is a reimbursement basis. But, but I think we can break it down into a small amount of um, but you think you can do the one project with that, that, those funds? Um, yeah. If we aren't able to completely cover the entire project with this amount, you know, separate and economic development has budgeted amount for housing, so we can fill in with that too. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Yeah, I didn't know what your estimates are. We haven't put out, it's kind of been one of those things we haven't put out actual bids to, to do construction yet because we don't have money in the bank at this point so to actually do it. So we did kind of slow down there for a while, and even with the community service tax credit that we were awarded, the way that works is you collect private contributions, and you know they get then the authorization to reduce their tax bill with it, but we do still have to, we aren't getting a check from the state of Kansas. We are collecting private contributions right now. We've got some, but we don't have the entire amount um, filled. So again, we don't have the money in hand at this point to start the construction. And um, the board has felt like it's important to have that first. And so we don't have we don't have bids. I have estimates, but I don't have bids. And uh, estimates have been. Stafford and the airport board, you know, the way their exist their structure is now, uh, I think it would be a huge benefit to the hospital for their ambulance service. Oh. Okay. Um, and that's kind of where the Department of Transportation is headed with uh, with their programs is an all weather runway in every county for an area ambulance service. Uh, and I don't know and I they want they want one. They would like one. And the program that uh, Phil's shared with us is, that, you know, it's a pretty good program 
forward to get that put into place. Okay. It's a 9010 cost share that they 90% of. So, um, and he's approached us about it, and then we're sitting here yeah. playing the Jungle yeah. Act and kind of waiting on the staff or two. Trying to get some other ideas <coughs> on. See what their blueprint looks like because. Well, we're not to that point yet. I mean, the they have they have plans on their existing facility now, but there's not enough room. So now they're looking at other locations, and and they have some in mind, um, but we're trying to get the city either to work with the city or to not work. City is what we're trying to get figured out. And do it as a county. And do it as a county. Okay. Because in this, in Clay has went to the city council meeting to Stafford and talked with them. Um, you know, to either work together, but the grant facilitator would have to be one. Either the county or the city can't be joined. Yes. Okay. So, or the, the applicant. <coughs> the applicant but, but the for ownership. the applicants, right? yeah, and the grant monies that they've got to get to the point that they're at, that there's a feasibility study that they have done and a location study. And they've done both of those. So there's at this point already, now it's a location issue. Um, and, and what we're trying to work together to do is not to go back to square one, but to continue where they're at now. Mm -hmm. They've already spent. They've spent a lot of money already. Yeah. And <clears throat> I, I think it'd be a good idea if you could talk with, if you have time to talk with, with Phil, to get some information from him to get your opinion. Yeah. I'd like to know what you think. Well, we have discussed this as a board even, and um, I think the consensus was that. It would be a nice amenity, but of the things that we have on our plate, it's not the highest priority. Right. It's not likely to drive the most business development relative to other priorities we can emphasize. We haven't necessarily discussed it in the context of um, you know, the, the, air, the hospital service. Mm -hmm. using Very important service. We, we were more um, in the context of Business yeah. development, and, and that argument's been made, but I think that that, that it does support business development. But I think that um, well, and, and part of their was what that they're there's other things that probably prior, more prior. primarily drive that yeah. business development. And, and Phil has had a good, good discussion about ideas of forming an airport authority to for the land, the land that they acquire mm -hmm. for kind of an industrial park on the airport land. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you can work pretty closely hand in hand once it's to that point, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, or the brainstorm it to that point. I have, it was part of the, the study, the, the analysis of the maintenance costs in the improved airport? Um, there, there are maintenance costs there. I don't, I don't think the maintenance costs would be any different than what the city of Stafford budgets the airport at now. Um, it's a pretty substantial run. I wouldn't think there'd be too much. Yeah, I, I mean, not only the maintenance and things like that, lights and building maintenance, you know, stuff like that would be kind of the. But I think the city of Stafford, with the twenty or thirty thousand a year, is what they budget for maintenance at the airport. I don't know that they use it. But that's what they budget for. It. Mm. So I don't know. I mean, I've, yeah. we've talked about it with Phil, in, you know, quite a bit, and I just we're kind of more hurdle you jump next approach, I guess. Now you know, it's pretty hard to turn down the 10% of several million dollars is still a good big chunk. <laughs> you kind of hate to just 
kick a good horse in the mouth, too. And Nita Nita said that we we do, we do have the funds in the capital improvement funds to do some of you know the majority of it. But, but in order to do that, it has to be in the county's name. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. And the county can do so, a lot of the work as a yeah. corporation. <laughs> So we're and then there's will Stafford spend thirty thousand dollars a year to maintain an airport that's no longer under there? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So that's another issue too. So yeah, we're just I didn't know if anybody brought you up to speed we, on that or at, at different times it's probably been year. not a year yeah. close to it. Um, and I think that well, the board did discuss it, and I think that they, the consensus was that it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not an economic development, per se, priority for the, the side of business. It's a new it development, is. so it might not hurt for you just to visit with Phil, and you know, he's probably more knowledgeable on it than he is. So the board thought, because I think if we're, we're going to do something, we'd have to have economic development on board. I mean, yeah, yeah. If you're starting to talk about airport authorities and so forth, you know, I have done a fair amount of research on um, the idea of a port authority and how that might be an avenue to establish a transportation hub here. Maybe we should be looking at a more broad transportation strategy if we're thinking about investing that level of money into something. I mean, we also have the idea that we're here at the intersection of the two U.S. highways, mainline railroad. There's a lot of other transportation elements that you can consider if you're looking for. I don't know. Can we get into a <laughs> transportation <laughs> strategic plan? <laughs> Maybe we'll let you do that. <laughs> I'd be sorry you asked me. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it might not take a whole lot of investment to develop something like that, but I could make the argument might support business development more than more than air. I don't know. Phil, In fact, Phil, Phil if, we had, if we had $20,000 to support, um, I looked into a grant program last summer, which might have been nice. It would have been an enormous amount of hoops, not only to develop the application, but probably even carry it out. And long story short, I feel like I had the time to, to dedicate to that. I'm not sure we would have been competitive for this particular program anyway, but it would have provided maybe $50,000 for a feasibility study that could set the stage for investment.
Cargill and Dodge, I'm aware that they put on you know, stuff that they're sending to Asia. They put it on a container. It goes to Kansas City, which is the closest rail hub now. And it goes on a train and it goes right past <laughs> us, right back to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we could, it, there, you could probably draw from the region. Yeah. Phil, he was part of the one that they did at Russell, and, and he can tell you more detail about who used it and who didn't use it. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting thoughts that he put in there. But. It's kind of interesting, too, to know they changed, the states changed the guidelines of engineering and the monies that would rack up a huge of millions of dollars of bills. We can do a lot of work with yeah. the county equipment. Oh. And not necessarily have to, you know, spend all the engineering fees and and things. That uh, I think we can do the thing for half the price they quoted. I see. They have their own in-house engineer now. Yeah, and it and yes, and, and to be good. yes. Yeah. that would help. And and they're they're wanting something done here because there's only a few counties that don't have this, and I'm one of them. Yeah. And I think for the. For them to changing the rules to kind of fit everybody, I think I think now's the time to really get pretty aggressive and look at this. And, and just because it is a 90 grant and we can do a lot of the work ourselves and we have the equipment to do it, yeah. I'm for we'll be backing up if we don't. But I don't know why. It's still a lot of money. <laughs> Even if you're only paying 10%. How much is the total scope of investment they're estimating? When they looked at the first feasibility study to relocate the airport, they're looking at anywhere from four to five million dollars total. I think you could cut that in way over half because we're we're to phase two, almost three. You know, ready to per the land purchase is going to be the major investment, and then the material to build the runway. Or to build the runway to be the next. Mm -hmm. But um, there's places they've done, oh, I don't know if you've been east of Hudson, where they tore up the road east of Hudson, Hudson and Elmgrid, where it goes east to the big compressor station. Mm -hmm. yeah. They tore that road up. They filled the guys with put millions and then they oiled and sealed those. Yeah. Yeah. That would be suffice for the runway they're talking about. And we have that, we have all that stuff. Yeah, you wouldn't have to do it <laughs> one time. So yeah, you don't have to do it all at once. This would be a phase over yeah. three or four or five years. Hmm. So I think for the cost share of the grant, I think it's something we should really, and Clay, you know, he's expressed uh, interest in, in the grant as well for the air ambulance service benefit in the hospital too. Yeah. Location would be pretty important. Yeah. And, and one location. Pretty good access to get out, get on the road. Well, the one location that looks really appealing that they have in their location study is right is, uh, from the Tycoons there. Well, from the existing airport, it'd be a mile and a half straight to the west. <coughs> um, so it would be that far. Uh, no, it's dry land. Okay. So it's it, south it's on the, the west side of the road. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So where the road curves back to the north, old 50 curves back, and be up on the west side of that. Okay. Food for thought. Yeah. <laughs> Even if I have one more there. D is the room for an airport. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to price of land today? It yeah. needs to be about a mile long. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does need to be. But, you know, Phil was saying you could farm with them. Yeah. A couple hundred feet of it, so you're only talking 40 acres, but to get 40 acres, 40 acres wide and mile long is going to be a trick. Yeah. <coughs> and you probably want your runway to go north, north south. south. Mm -hmm. north south. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just food for thought, isn't it? Yeah. Okay.
Or if you want to see the feasibility studies and the information I have, I, I more than willing to bring to you. I have all that stuff that they paid for to see. So if you want it, I'll drop them by. Feasibility more than double. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to get rid of. It. I mean, he, he's pretty excited about yeah. it. So. <laughs> to say the least. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Or recess. I feel calm in it. Hey. We're all just crap every day. We're the same. It's actually better to go on. It's nice to actually sit in these chairs. Yeah. 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 Well, they don't try and get up too quickly that you might get hooked. Yeah, so if, I, if I'm wearing a regular holster, I mean, i got to take a chair yeah. out of the door. Yeah. Oh, Charlie wasn't with you guys? No, no, Charlie. Oh. It, when you it was a potential return. Oh, okay. I'll <laughs> Charlie was here just for moral support. <laughs> He's out of bed. He's out of bed. This is the revised version of the uh, administrative operating procedure for the fire chiefs. You know, we decided to change a few words in there. So if it looks good to you guys, can we add a few things? Especially, you know, down the design everywhere, any change that were made or if the spokesperson would be reported to the county clerk as soon as possible. Which we all kind of talked last week or last time we were here. Well, there probably wouldn't be any changes. It's going to be like every other board of fire department has. You guys are doing a good job. We're not going to mess with it. So, railroad. Railroad. And then uh, the compensation. We put in there that the compensation is negotiable based upon the current year's budget. I really think that was the only couple things that needed to be changed. Unless you guys see something else. I don't. Unless finally. Okay. We need to vote on that. Or mm -hmm. I make a motion for standard operating guideline procedure number 115. Second. Motion carried. Thank you. The next thing we got here is we have those five ton military trucks. We have purchased some forestry services and so kindly let us have. Um, there's, there's a couple things, or one big thing when they're extremely loud and trying to communicate with dispatch and trying to communicate with. Yeah, and we moved exhausts. I mean, mine especially is all the way down the side and down halfway down the bed, and I know St. John's is the same way, and it's just, they're just loud. Just, I have a proposal. We have turbo it's quiet. Yeah, the turbo is quiet. Yeah, the turbo is quiet. The turbo is quiet. The turbo is actually quiet. This is from CBS Electronics in Topeka. This is uh, guys that we usually do most of our radio business with for the county. I mean, our small pieces and parts, we, if we need to, we get them in great band of Motorola. But we like to use these guys because they're, they're pretty right. Right. Pretty right. 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 Um, this has been in the works for several months. We've actually discussed it for over six months, but and we just decided to put some, go ahead and get a bid and, and see where we set. The first, the first one here is a two-position setup, and it is basically it's a intercom system with radio communications to dispatch. Now, with that, it comes with the two headsets, um, a pump panel station in the back, and then you have a plug for the front. Your passenger and driver. So your driver gets out of the truck, he takes his headset over. Your passenger, either one, gets out of the truck, takes their headset with him, goes in, plugs it on the back of the truck where the pump station's at, and you have full communication with the driver back and forth on an intercom system. And also, if he needed to, he could communicate with this match. But the guy on the back can. The guy on the back can too. Oh. So it, this is a dual. This uh, is a dual purpose one. Okay. Um, they are a little costly, but. Um, I've done some shopping around and, and I've talked to the, the salesman Brad up here and I've talked to a couple other firefighters that I know that have got different setups and this is pretty much the, the, the pretty rugged one that's going to be durable for what we do and he suggested this one 
for the point of fact that we don't, we don't fight a whole lot of structure very much. It's not a structure that we're not going to have one. But on, on a wildland part of what we do, this is, this is going to be my question. So and then the second one down here is just the same system. It's just a headset. Same thing, but no intercom. It's just one headset. And then you can take that headset and play it kind of repeats the purpose. And the reason behind it is so many of those chiefs are we can have a general return on it. We might be able to back the truckies and still have truckies yeah. command and by the fire at the same time. I mean, that happens all the time. Typically, when you're, I mean, you have two people on that truck. Yeah. That's not the only way to fight the That's the only way to operate and fight the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Are you can you can do it one person. It's but you better be in a little truck to do it. Yeah. You can't do it with those big ones. I mean, yeah. not like we one person in the truck. It's doable. It's yeah. hard, but it's doable. But the big ones. Is and you can communicate. The driver can communicate up to the back. Yeah, the driver and and pump operator will have total communication back and forth. And with other and yeah. with other trucks and everything else, and that way you can still command the seat from the top, where you can actually see a little bit better. Also, if you're on the back. <coughs> and this is uh, one truck. This is just people for one headset. We've got four of the big trucks. We've got actually four, but we have what we are looking at is five. I mean, we're in the stage now that I think one truck can serve at Chief Sanders Station, and Stafford is going to replace one of the old uh, forestry trucks that's up at the north end of the county. It's just a matter of which one is it going to replace. And we've got a tank issue on one. The other one was rebuilt for insurance after it caught fire. So we actually have more than five because I have two big trucks, but yeah. one of the trucks is not loud. It's a big truck. It's a four diesel truck. It's, a it's nothing. It's not loud. Yeah, you can still just take the hood and get directions. These are basically these. These will be designed for our our four three trucks or five times. Like, so you're saying we need four of these? For now, I'd like to get four because we don't know what is going to happen with that other truck. What we're going to do with it, and then you know if we look at it next year. Hey, we're going to keep this truck. Let's go ahead and order another headset. Budget wise, okay. Looking at about next. <laughs> well, and that was the other thing we were going to discuss. We need, <laughs> we need to ask what some of the what some what are coming some of the at so. Rob and I haven't seen each other obviously, so <laughs> we were doing a crash vacation. course today. Somebody has a vacation. First one in nine years. <laughs> So your 4,500 numbers are your capital outlays. Okay. So you have 25,000 $20, in other, other equipment, equipment, which is where I would take it. That's what we were. That's what we not do. something you were going to purchase every year. No, 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 no. That's no, what, no, what no. capital outlay is for. It's for things like this. Got Long term equipment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not something you budget vehicle. every year. Yes. Okay. No, there is one. <coughs> for vehicles, yeah, that, yeah. we saw that, that one also, but it says. I would take it out of that line item. So you should right. be good getting the four. You've got 20,000 in there, you have nothing yeah, to spend on. It shows here on the bottom. Your percentage. 60. Yeah, you're running fine. 60% of the dollar. And really, we have one more big purchase that we want to do, and that was with the tank, the poly tank. A poly tank, but we're going to spec that out. I want Chief Sanders to spec that out what he wants. It's going to fit his truck, and then we'll shop around with the prices. So, but this is. How much, how much did you say that was in there? Uh, this ballpark is from 87 to 9,000 for all the units. And the good thing is, here is, you know, talking with Brad the salesman. So if you guys can install your own radios, you can install this for you. So I'm going to seek some outside help from the sheriff's son just because we're getting the ones that's been wiring our everything for our vehicles. That we'll get it done. I mean, all of us, I mean, it may cost us a little bit. Like connections and stuff like that, but that's something to take care of. Does this include labor? Or no, no. no. labor. So you're planning you guys. Well, labor, labor, labor's, labor's going to be. It'll be us. Okay. So it'll be on our. If own we have a few little things, it would. You're looking like, you know, connectors or some wire or something like that. Stuff so something we need across the street. So. But everybody's got something they can do. Three years, two hundred years, best way. This I think will eliminate a lot of problems with the dispatch not being able to hear us, and yeah. that's not being able to hear us. <laughs> so, and we've taken the extra steps and we put the big speakers, you know, that you have in the radio. It just doesn't. And even on my truck, I've got one on the back. 
and I still, I, I can be up there and run that pump full throttle on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, even the cab will have them up there on your head, you should be able to hear them. And if there's some noise, they're not. You can't talk. The sound. military didn't sound like they were saying so. So, it's a lot of sound. But this is the kind of, I mean, typically you want three men's. I mean, or, but, I mean, is this. This is. This is going to be the guy you want to go through. Yeah. Nick had done some shopping around earlier in the year, and we're talking right around the two thousand dollar range. Yeah. I just took it okay. out upon myself to call Brad. Okay. So I call a lot of them. Try to push the wireless ones and the wireless uh, ones are just. Multiple. You're looking at another three hundred bucks for the wireless. As soon as I said for what you guys do, he said I would go with the uh, jacks. With the jacks, he said it's a lot less problems. Yeah. He's never steered us wrong yet on, yeah. on anything. So. So you're talking 1750 times four for right now? Yeah. Seven thousand. What is that? Seven thousand. Seven thousand. Yeah. That's why I can make the seven thousand seven hundred. Oh, there's a whole bunch of people out there. I don't think it's bigger than that. For five of them. No, five. 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 Oh, I thought you were buying four. Was, well, four. okay, five was the four. initial one. Yeah. We're yeah. four. Yeah. four yeah. So it's four. You're okay. Yeah. Correct. So. Seven. Seven. Well, I move that we purchase four intercom setup systems for the military trucks for a total of seven thousand dollars. Second that. Okay. In favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Motion carried. We don't want to have to come here. <laughs> yeah, that's something else we want to discuss too. Okay, we stumbled across the deal. <laughs> well, it was by chance as well as I had to go to Motorola and get something for the sheriff's office and said use the equipment on there. Motorola and Great Man has got, they're selling some used portable radios. Reconditioned. Reconditioned. I mean, they've been through the shop, they've been tuned, you know, all the bugs have been fixed. For, this, for the most part, what they're including is a, a standard charger, a battery, and antenna. And it comes with a, <laughs> it comes with a, a lapel mic. It's a tested unit, and I, I talked with Donna up at uh, Motorola, and they said they're throwing in a, a new battery because I've got enough buttons for these things. They had 11. Or I had 12 of these left, but I know one of the station chiefs is going to go buy it one of his own because to replace his personal one. But um, they're HT750 portables. They're 16 channel radios. Here. No, this is a 1250. It's, it's basically just without the base plate. That's all it is. So they're $175 a piece for used radios. We're looking brand new comps on the radio. I think those right now run about five, five and a half, and that's just what. Because of the base plate. Because yeah, the base plate. We were looking at purchasing those used radios and, and with the idea we're going to put two at each station. And we obviously want some firefighter into the structured fire with, with uh, just a picture. I mean, and it makes sense to us. And this is something that the Chiefs had also talked about within the last year that we could look at find some, some other radios just to house. Now, the city of St. John, all of their firefighters have portables. The city bought them all brand new radios. And most of the guys are on the city or on the county for the most part. Um, Two or three of my people are because the city and we've been buying our own also. But you know for benefits the county also. But Stafford's the same way. Most of their city guys have got city radios but they kind of try to leave them there with the city equipment because that is designated to their stuff. So we were looking at buying a few of these. I mean she had Basically, it has 11 left that, that I know of. I haven't called to talk to this week. For $175 a piece, you're getting a pretty good radio. And if we have to send it in to be fixed, they can still work on it. And I have another version here. It's an HD 1000. For $100 a piece, the only problem is that uh, the only partial is coming. So, it's outdated. It's outdated. It's a purpose. And then these are the 1500s. 1500s in there. Yeah, that's basically so put, so put nice their junk. junk basically. We have a couple of them downstairs, and they don't. That's what we traded radios for. You could talk from 
at a junction at a wreck scene to dispatch three miles. Yeah, not good. Case. So and that was you know something else we were looking at purchasing some ranges, some portables from these guys. They'll program them for us, everything. So we we'll all take care of them. Yeah. If they put your frequency on They have our frequency list, everything we want in there. Yeah, and you know, they're good guys to work with for the most part, but you're going to order big stuff, kind of shop around a little bit. So, and I can almost tell you if we would have went through them, this figure would probably been about two to three hundred dollars per unit. Per unit. Yeah. So, I like doing business with my local people, but when it's a Makes sense. Yeah. So you're looking at buying all eleven? I would like to, or at least at least ten. You know, that would put at least two, four, six, eight, ten, and you know, a couple stations have got an extra radio. So what station has an extra radio? We want to put one there. Like I have an extra one on my station. I think Super has got an extra portable. But you know, Rob, where he didn't have any extra portables, we put two over there. And Two over for Jerry. And what else is going to be those hold on stage on here? Replacements or so. Yeah, if someone breaks one, some, you know, all right, hey, here's a $175 radio. Yeah. Let's send yours in and get this space and use this until something happens. And not everybody gets it. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're very selective on what our, our new beats we have. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 it's sometimes hard to get back when they quit. Can you keep track of who has a radio? Yeah. Uh, EMS offices. Dad was pretty good about it keeping track of you've got what equipment and it's that time of year where we're in the winter months so we try to go through and re-inventory equipment who's got what and all that so five stations right yeah <coughs> technically six yeah i think 10 would be the right number there I'd like to buy. I like to buy what they got left, and, and as of the other day, they had eleven. But I have not called to see. And I can even step out for a quick call to see what she has. It might be so, and uh, maybe something I can just step out the hall and call her right quick so we'll see what she has left. But that's what she has. She was going to go take a hit down. She is thinking at least she has at least 11, if not 12. And she said if we bought a lot of them, they would throw the program in four threes. So we'll pass the same program. Either way, if I believe Nick can program another bigger radius, but I don't know if he can program the portables or not. So I mean, be a safe bet.
in the late 90s. Yes. I we're not going to go that high with them. So um, she has 15 for sure. She got three on hold. I still think we're looking at 11, 12 range would, would get us. Yeah. I'll give you a call back there. Yeah. Thank you, Donna. Bye. Is there, are they all about the same age? The um, way I understood it is they had a big customer trade out portable and upgrade. So I went to something a little bit here. It's usually what happens. It, it was either a department of some some type, or, or you know, security service, or yeah. Chiefs meeting once a month. Yeah. And we need to bring some special basis with you all yeah. yeah. So we'll probably look towards the end of the month because I, I think the Chiefs meeting is probably going to be here, over here on the Thursday. Yeah. You see this for the month already. Yeah, yeah. That's, right. that's right. We can shake. We set up for the first time. Yeah, well, whichever we can get, get our meetings. Yeah. Shortly thereafter, our meetings. But we didn't want to have to come here every week. Yeah. That'd be fine. We can always talk to you. We like short meetings. I understand. All right, then I got this one. Okay, I need to make another copy. We'll be back after a while. You'll explain it to us when we'll put it. All right. We have, to, we have to stick around today. We got training at the end. So. Uh, safe schools will come down and start to see what we're all through the school. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. Shall we? We did. It'll be a good deal. I'll see you guys for lunch or really. Okay. Shall we invite us? It'll be a good deal. Yeah, so, he was talking about it. Yeah, kind of go hand in hand with me being in the school, and so we'll talk about it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you next month sometime. All right. Anything else?